The cities and towns across the country are pulled into culture wars. Public officials are being pressured to take a stand on all sorts of issues, from book bans to drag shows to seemingly uncontroversial artwork. NBC News campaign embed Alex Tabba tells us why a town manager in northern New Hampshire just quit his job. And we should warn you, this report does contain offensive language. In the little town of Littleton, New Hampshire. These are the three pictures that started this entire controversy. This mural may look innocent. It's like finding your roots and growing and, and you know, branching out. But it set off a firestorm. Art band became the buzzword when real reality what it was. It was an absolute assault on people for who they love. The artwork can be found on the side of a Main Street restaurant in Littleton. It's supposed to symbolize inclusivity for the LGBTQ plus community, among other marginalized groups, according to North Country Pride, the organization that sponsored the mural. It went up last summer, and it quickly drew the ire of a local politician who made her position on the art clear at a board meeting streamed by local media. But I, I don't want that to be in our town. That politician, Carrie Gendro, is also a New Hampshire state senator. In an interview with the Boston Globe, she called the art, quote, demonic symbolism and said homosexuality was, quote, an abomination, which was painful for Gleason, whose son came out while he was in high school. When you're working with someone and they call a family member an abomination, that's kind of when it started. NBC News reached out to state senator Carrie Gendro for comment, but we didn't hear back. The art remained, but a couple of months later, a Tony Award-winning musical about a gay couple came to town. Gleason says that reignited tensions, and a resident came into his office. So this lady showed up and, and wanted to see me. She said, why aren't you stopping the play? I said, I can't. I said, you know, that's freedom of speech. She turned to walk away, and she turned back, and she said, you know, I read about your son, and I just hope you're happy is in hell with the devil where he belongs. In 2016, Gleason's son Patrick died of cancer. When you lose a child, the pain never goes away. You carry it every day. And to kind of have that evoked and to tell me that my son, who was a f beautiful and fantastic person, was in hell with the devil because of how he was born, um, I'll disagree with anybody. Enough was enough for Gleason. Last month, he decided to resign. A week later, this photo came in the mail from the same Littleton resident who told Gleason his son was in hell. And she had written on it, queer bastard. The human rights campaign and LGBTQ plus advocacy group says what's happening in Littleton is playing out across the country. It's all part of the same effort by super far right Christian nationalist folks who are trying to make even the acknowledgement of LGBTQ people and our identities um, into something that is nefarious. That's the best manager we've had. Friday was Gleason's last day as town manager. He believes his son is proud of him for standing up against discrimination. And I really do believe he's looking at me and saying, Dad, you stayed true to what you taught us and you stayed true to yourself. And I'm proud of the fact that you stood up and didn't run and you made a statement. Alex Tabbitt, Littleton, New Hampshire. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.